I promise to cut taxes for the rich and use the poor as a cheap source of teeth for aquarium gravel. Yeah, that'll show those poor. Why are you cheering, Fry? You're not rich. True, but someday I might be rich, and then people like me better watch their step. <sighs> I don't get mad when my kids tell me no, even if I don't like how they said it. Like, if they have a bad attitude, I'm not gonna snap back at them. Meeting them on that level is not gonna help me achieve my goal. And my goal is to raise emotionally intelligent people who can communicate and be mad without being mean. And I mean, everyone has a bad attitude sometimes. Anyway, no is an important word for kids to learn and practice using. It's the first boundary to get to set. But that doesn't mean I always accept their no. Like if I tell my kid to pick up her toy and she says no, that's like, yeah, it wasn't really a question, my dude. You don't have to be happy about it, but you do have to do it. And a lot of times, no is a conversation starter. I think I ask my kids why more than they ask me why some days. We're pretty good at finding compromise. But no is never questioned when it comes to consent. Can I have a hug? No. How about a high five? Still no? Okay. You don't have to explain why I'm not allowed to touch you. My kids are not afraid to say no. They're not afraid that there could be consequences if they say no. Are their no's sometimes frustrating? Oh yeah. But I'm not the only person they're gonna need to say no to in their lives and they feel safe saying it so that's gotta be worth something. You know, I actually just had a really great conversation about saying no with Gwenna the other day. It's too bad you can't hear it. Oh, wait, you can. Okay, bye. What are you going to do about the labor shortage? You want us to fix that? Well, it's not like there's anything that we can do about it. We're not going to start paying people more. That would be insane. Of course not. We would never suggest that. What do you think about child labor? Oh, uh... Well, because it's actually very trendy. The Department of Labor has reported a 69% increase in minors who are employed in violation of federal labor law since 2018. Well, we don't violate any, um, you know, we don't, we don't break any laws. Of course you don't. Yeah, and we can't be held accountable for any of the practices of the contractors that we work with. Oh my God, no way. I'm just saying it's trendy. It's underground. Now might be a good time to go mainstream with child labor. Yeah. It is time. That's what the guy from the Foundation for Government Accountability said. Wow, that sounds like a totally legit and impartial organization that our executives and board members have probably never heard of or donated to. Exactly. And they totally understand that working is actually really good for kids. You know, at the end of the day, this is all about parental choice. Are you really gonna tell mom and dad that their kid can't put in time at the family business? Or at a meat packing plant. Or at a meat packing plant. Sure, why not? Plus, I've never met a 14 year old union organizer. Yes, exactly. Greece is making hundreds of beaches more accessible for wheelchair users. And it's all thanks to this thing. It's called a sea track and it's a solar powered remote operated sliding chair that allows users to glide in and out of the sea. How does it work? First, users navigate an accessible wooden path that leads directly to the sea track. Then they adjust the height of the chair and transfer into it from the wheelchair. Using a waterproof remote, they glide smoothly along a specially designed ramp, leading them right into the water. At the end of the ramp, handrails are available to help users get out of the chair to go for a swim and get back in afterwards, and it's already making a big splash. Greece has rolled out this innovative technology on 147 beaches, with plans to bring that close to 300 over the coming months. The initiative also aims to create more accessible parking, restrooms and changing facilities, turning these beaches into truly wheelchair friendly havens. Do you want to see a sea track at a beach near you? Share this video to help spread the word and let's make sure beaches are accessible for everyone. As a concerned parent, I think teaching a child to be straight is dangerous. Heterosexuality leads to unplanned pregnancies and a horrible sense of interior design. I mean, Mickey and Minnie Mouse? I don't need my child thinking about mice having three-pump missionary. Like, how do straight people even do it? Who's the one who finishes six time and who's the one who's bringing the other one water? It just makes no sense. So you can listen to Dave Matthews Band in the privacy of your home, but at school, my child should be learning about Mariah Carey like a normal child. Also, deciding a child's gender at birth just teaches children that it's okay to get handouts. This is America. You gotta make your own legacy. This law will require parents to be notified if their child asks such questions such as what's a tailgate and can you play Mr. Brightside? It's for the children's safety.
Hey, do y'all remember when this happened? This, one of the worst disasters in US history. You know that time on February 3rd when a Norfolk Southern train derailed near East Palestine, Ohio, leading to this controlled release of vinyl chloride? Well, this guy, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine, still has not declared the area to be an emergency. The immediate aftermath of the derailment and the controlled release were devastating, but residents and businesses are still suffering four months later. In the weeks and months following the derailment, thousands of animals died from contaminated waterways. Residents are suffering from bloody noses, nausea, dizziness, and businesses still remain closed. Many residents also cannot access independent testing they need to know what toxins are in the air, water, and soil around them. By declaring an emergency in East Palestine, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine would unlock federal resources, not just for East Palestine, but for communities in Pennsylvania who are also suffering. This would provide financial relief and give access to desperately needed independent testing. But DeWine only has until July 3rd to declare an emergency. So we're going to Columbus to take our demand right to him. Tomorrow, June 14th, impacted residents from Pennsylvania and Ohio are traveling to Columbus to take the demand right to DeWine. He's playing politics with people's lives when his constituents and neighboring communities desperately need those resources. And we need your voice. Tomorrow, June 14th, 12 p.m., 125 East Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio. The registration link is in our bio. If you can't make it, we do also have a petition. But if you're anywhere in the area, we look forward to seeing y'all at the State House. Did you know indigenous and enslaved black people were the original creators of American barbecue? Despite coming from completely different continents, enslaved black people and indigenous people had many similar cooking practices. For example, open flame cooking, spit roasting meats. Africans were also skilled in salting and smoking their meats to keep them from going bad during long journeys in the heat. So when they were forced to America, they shared techniques with indigenous people and together they developed barbecue style cooking. In the antebellum South, enslaved black men were the first official pit masters preparing food over pits in the ground for enslaved slavers, politicians, the rich elite, especially for Independence Day. That's why when they earned their own freedom, formerly enslaved people celebrated Juneteenth with barbecue, an acknowledgement of them finally achieving their own independence. I think it's time. La, 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 la. Warm it up. So who exactly is diversity, equity, and inclusion bad for? I have no comment. You have no comment on who diversity, equity, and inclusion is bad for when you decide to ban it in our uh, schools? I have no comment. How do you expect a black professor to, uh, to not take a stance against racism, racism in their own class? I have no comment. You have no comment on that. Are you aware that under this bill that the uh, a professor could not legally uh, take a stance against the Holocaust in their classroom? How do you feel about I'm that? You have no comment on a bill that you supposedly wrote that you stole from uh, uh, other fascist states? <laughs> so how do you just justify censoring the discussion of electoral politics after blatantly stealing Ohio's electoral maps? Oh, that too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. The things that you, you did. The consequences of your actions. What do you have to say to the countless students already looking out of state for school because yeah, of your bill? I have nothing to say to you, and I've said it already. That's the way it's going to uh, You really haven't, Serino. Senator Serino, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, actually, I prefer Jerry. Jerry, I'd like you to answer. Who exactly is diversity, equity, and inclusion bad for? Who does that harm in our state that you feel the need to ban it in our public universities? You have no comment. Doesn't that, doesn't that mean something to you, that you have no comment to any of the questions that students are putting up to you while hundreds of students across the state are organizing against this? And you have the audacity to claim that we're being coerced against by our professors with no evidence because you just don't care? Hey, don't get in my face. I've made plenty of public comments on the bill. That's all I have. And to say. none of them have been to anyone's satisfaction. What I'm about to show you is not because I want to hurt people. It's not because I want to make you depressed. It's not because I want to make people sad or down on themselves. I'm only doing this because we need to bring awareness to this situation because right now Americans are being gaslit into thinking we're just getting lazier and we're too entitled and we're expecting too much. The Great Depression is widely considered, at least, at least where I went to school, as the worst economic time in American history. I want to show you the numbers on what the average income was during the Great Depression to now. Just for reference, the Great Depression is considered to be in this time period, 1929 to 1941. I looked at every single year and looked at what the worst year was. The worst year 
was 1930 economically for American households. So 1930, the average net yearly income of Americans, this is so this is for one American, not a family, this is for one person, annually was $4,887. Let's look at how much money that is in today's money. I'm just gonna let this sit for a second. 1930, $4,881. I know I forgot it was a seven, whatever. 2023, this is for one person, not a family. One person, $88,000 a year in today's money. That was their depression. If that's a depression, look at what we're doing. In 2019, and this was the average income for one American in the United States. Just in case you wanted to see the exact number, I went ahead and converted that over. I even rounded up to 32,000 and put it in for 2023 from 2019, and it's 38,000 a year for one American. We are in a Great Depression. I mean, I said in another video, we're in the worst economic time in American history. We have the lowest purchasing power we have ever had in American history, and they, I, and they want to they want to make it seem like I'm lying. This is the numbers. One more thing cuz I don't want to end on a negative note. I want everyone to remember something. If you're working full time and you found a way to pay your bills, you're never hungry, you got clothes on your back, a car that you can drive, you deserve massive applause for that. And I don't care what anyone says. If you listen to this guy, what a baby. Look at him getting in his feelings. I don't care. All of us collectively that have made things happen under these conditions to take care of ourselves. Some of us have kids, take care of our families, wives, brothers, sisters, anybody. Even just taking care of yourself. If you've managed to make that happen, you honestly, cheers to that. We're in the worst economic time in American history. We have the lowest purchasing power we have. Look at me. I couldn't get my nose quite right, but I need you to understand. I have a whole PhD and I'm a millennial and I can barely afford to live this summer. I've been gaslit my whole motherfucking life. I've been told, go to school, pursue your dreams. You'll be able to afford to live. Work really hard. You'll be able to afford to live. I have been working myself to fucking death not knowing i'm a late in life realized autist hyper focusing getting done at rest 40 percent more than the non-autistic considerate and motherfucker i am struggling to live a whole phd i have numerous research and writing skills i've been interviewed in multiple outlets i have a publication for at least each year since starting my phd on top of eight years college teaching experience i have no savings one hundred sixty-six thousand dollars in student loan debt and the people who are hoarding the wealth we know who they are they have billions and billions and billions of dollars that they're hoarding from the public and we know who they are i know it because i studied them we need to take their wealth and redistribute it. Money is literally made up. Money was a media created to sustain a society. This is not the way money is intended to be used. It isn't intended to be hoarded by the few so that none of us can afford what we need to survive. We have every power within us to take that money back and to give it to us so we all can have what we need to live and to thrive. It makes no fucking sense to not do that. If you don't watch Fox News, here are five totally real and definitely not made up stories you might have missed this week. There's a new threat on the horizon, and it's the right's worst nightmare. Some are using the term, drum roll please, Trantifa. A portmanteau of transgender and Antifa. Trantifa activists are gonna steal your suburbs and make your kids gay. Get ready to be punched by Trantifa. Speaking of very real things that are totally happening, there's a new curriculum in our middle schools, and the kids are sick of it. We see middle schoolers sitting there saying, I'm tired of watching lesbian, uh, two women kissing. The left has gone too far. Canceling math and replacing it with lesbians. It's no wonder middle school boys are pissed off. Lesbian, uh, two women kissing. Failed gubernatorial candidate Tudor Dixon gave one of the wildest arguments against green energy that I have ever heard. And these people who continue to push this Green New Deal initiative, it's ruined our relationships with Saudi Arabia. Empathy's overrated. Instead, we should punish and stigmatize homelessness. Homelessness isn't about a lack of affordable housing. These are people that have failed in life and they're on their deathbed. God, I'm so sick of those unhoused people in their ivory tower. They really have it all. I swear we're like a few weeks from Jesse Waters encouraging actual atrocities against unhoused people. And if we're not honest about it, we're never going to fix this problem. 
And finally, Big Fertility is the one behind the girl boss epidemic. Well, Big Fertility knows that we are largely putting a prominence on girl bossing and putting your career first. That person was Turning Point USA influencer Alex Clark. She's made it her personal mission to attack birth control and tell girls to abandon their dreams and get knocked up instead. It's worth pointing out, as my colleague Madeline Peltz did this week, Alex Clark is not a mother. By all appearances, she is very dedicated to her career. In fact, she gave a speech at TPUSA's Young Women's Leadership Summit, where she accidentally misogynied so hard that she lost the crowd. I hope you enjoy this clip as much as I do. How many of you are considering ditching hormonal birth control? Okay. That's incredible. I'll see you on Friday for next week's recap because I'm a childless girl boss who's a slave to my job. We can't afford milk. We can't afford eggs. We can't afford our rent. We can't afford our- What I'm about to tell you is going to be really shocking for some of you guys, so please listen. If you haven't watched this person's full video, please go watch it real quick before you watch mine. For anyone who's taken psychology before, you've seen Maslow's hierarchy of needs before. Basically what this shows is everything that us humans need in order to be happy in life. And the reason it's shown in this like pyramid is because you can't reach those other levels until you get the first one and then the second one. When I was in high school and college and we were learning about slavery and dictatorship, we had students asking a teacher, well, how did these people know that they weren't under dictatorship? How did they not know that they were slaves? And that's when the teacher pulled out this pyramid. He explained to us that these people didn't realize that they needed to save themselves from slavery or the dictatorship because they weren't even getting their first needs met. And you can't think of anything when you're hungry or when you're not feeling safe or when you don't have a home. And these people had to rely on their masters or their dictator to get them that food. There is a reason why the federal minimum wage hasn't been raised since the 90s. Because if we have the money to reach all the levels of this pyramid, then we don't have to rely on anybody but ourselves. If you haven't realized this already, the government needs us to rely on them. There's a reason they're not helping poor people or people who are lower class. And they get away with this by teaching us from a very young age that America is the only land of the free. It's kind of crazy that we never thought about how weird it was for us as elementary school kids to be singing about how great America was and how we were better than everybody else. And they teach us that the police and the government is here to protect us. We're just supposed to follow the laws and do what we're told. And they show us pictures and videos and stories of what dictatorship and slavery is supposed to look like and how we are definitely not that. And they talk about how our country is built upon how people can do whatever they want. And they don't have to follow the orders of a king or a queen. But we don't have as much free choice as they make us think we do. Because if we don't work for them, we die. And sure, they don't kill us themselves. They just let us starve. And that's why in a lot of places, it's illegal to feed homeless people. And there's a second level of the pyramid that mentions health. I'm sure you've heard before that they pump chemicals into our food. And while those chemicals won't make you sick right after eating it, they do eventually make you sick. That is why so many people are dying from cancer and a lot of other illnesses. And if we have to keep going back to the hospital, the hospital that's very expensive, by the way, then we only have enough money for the first level of the pyramid. Once again, we only have the money for water and food and shelter and clothes. And if you look around to the people all around you, almost all of us have issues with our self-esteem and listening to our bodies and understanding what we need mentally. And that is because we are so focused on these first two or three levels of the pyramid. Psychology is a really interesting subject but a lot of people use it for evil, as you can see. Because if they know how our minds and our bodies work, then they know how to control our minds and our bodies. I don't want to come on here and make a video that's going to scare everybody, but this is the truth, and this is what I've observed and a lot of other people, obviously. I have a feeling this video is not going to get a lot of attention, and you know why. If there's anyone who's studied psychology and knows a lot more about this topic than I do, please make a video about it, because this needs to be talked about. And I wish I can say that because I shared this information that I know what to do about it, but I don't. It's hard to know who to trust because politicians go out there and tell you, oh, well, I'm gonna do this, and they make it sound like they're gonna do all the things that you want them to do and save us. 
and they never do and they never follow through with any of their promises and it's getting really scary and it's only getting worse so if anybody has any ideas on what we can do to fix this problem ourselves please feel free to share them do you do you have an understanding of what the dei platform is or program is in this school district uh, well in, in in general i yes i did mm. and so what is it what is it in your mind so okay so let me just say that i do <laughs> Yes, I, I, I understand what you're, where you are coming from, that you want to see all children, you know, treated equally. I do too. I don't care who comes into my classroom. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what their sexual orientation is. But, Ms. Wilson, you would, I just want to know, tell me what the DEI platform, tell me what the DEI program is that you have a problem with. I want you to describe what's happening now that you have an issue with. And then be quick, because we have to move on to Ms. Van Wye, and then we need to carry on with the questions. I don't want to make it a long thing, but I just think it's important. And this is not a gotcha. And I, and I, don't, I, and I know we're tempted to clap and laugh. It's really not about that. This really is about being transparent, and it really is about the kids. So would you please just explain, as, as far as you understand it, what is the DE&I platform and program here at East Strasburg Area School District? And if, you, and if you're not sure, it's okay to say you're not I'm sure. Not, I'm not 100% and that's, sure what it is here at East Strasburg. What, what is your idea in general then? If you're not, if you don't have a specific, if you don't have specific knowledge of this particular school district, what is, what is it, what is it in your mind that, that the DEI platform does? And if you're not sure, that's okay too. I'm just very fearful mm -hmm. that there are going to be children that are made to feel bad of who they are because they're not part of what other children are. What, what is what is that? I mean, I got the feel for part, and I understand as a parent you, you have concerns and worries. But speak, I just want, like, what are you, what are you fearful of when you say that kids are going to feel bad? Feel bad about what? So I think that they're going to be made to feel bad if they are not a person of color. What would, no, guys, guys, no, 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 no please, 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 this, it, it, I, this is, a, this is uncomfortable, but it's necessary. And I appreciate the fact that you're even courageous enough to be honest. Because many people First, I will I will tell you this. I was actually, it was strongly recommended to me that I do not attend tonight. And I did not agree with that. I wanted to be here. I and I want to have that. I want to have an open dialogue. And I, want, exactly what we're doing. I want to, I want to learn. Learn. Yes. And I appreciate it. There would be no reason for you to, I mean, I understand why people say, don't go. Yeah, because we're going we're gonna to hold folks accountable. We are going to ask questions that deserve answers. Right. And we're going to, we're trying our best in this community to stop the days where people could just put their name on a ballot and not have to answer any questions. And they get elected and they don't have to hold themselves accountable. They don't have to demonstrate what they've done for the community. They just ride by on personality. We have to stop that because our community is suffering. As you said, the teaching standards, right, need help. There are certain things in this community that need help. And so we want to make sure that we are getting the best and the brightest to, to, to bring attention to those things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you now, because I don't want this to become a thing between you and I. I very much no, appreciate, no, no, I very much appreciate you having the dialogue, because how else do we grow as people? How else do we get to the bottom of what whatever this is, is, if we're not talking? Right? So I'm not judging you in any way. I just wanted to be clear, and I appreciate the clarity. The only thing that I will say to you is, in my mind as a parent of a person of color, my son is in the school district, um, for, for, the, for, for the eternity, since this country was founded, he has been taught, my ancestors have been taught, nothing that they can identify with. 
no contributions that they've made to this nation that they clearly have made, right? And there are a rarity of teachers and instructors and counselors that look like them. To let them know that's possible, you can do that. You can reach those heights. You're not, you're not limited to just doing you know, anything but. So it, it, it concerns me and I feel horrible that you would ever feel that by someone feeling better about themselves or having their story be told, which is extremely important, just like you have pride that your, that your ancestor story is told. We want the same thing. That's equity. Mm -hmm. That's inclusion. Mm -hmm. So no matter how harmful the story may be, no matter how vicious or how violent it may be, we embrace the Holocaust without an issue. We embrace World War I, World War II, all of these horrible things that occurred, lives lost, all of these things. But we tell it because we talk about the resolve of this nation. And we talk about that, right. And so what we're saying is, our people have contributions as well. And we want our kids to be taught so that they feel good about themselves. So with that, I will move on. And again, I appreciate it. Ms. Van Wyman, I'll give you an opportunity to speak to yours and then we'll move on. Like this brings the movement down Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around